All right, welcome. Um, so today we are going to be doing the OWASP Top 10. Uh, just like it says in the description, we may not be able to get through the whole thing. We may be able to get through it. I don't know yet. Um, this room is a little bit different, so you can't... Th there's no, like, IP address, like, up here for it, okay? Uh, actually, let me see. Let me, let me see, like, real quick, if I can actually ping that IP address. So I believe you have to do it in an attack machine. Let's try it. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's try ping 10.10.84.72. We do that? We can. Okay, so we can do it from here. So we go ahead and close that down actually. So let's um let's go ahead and actually I guess split screen I guess view. Yeah, I'll do like that. We'll just, here's our IP up here. So I start up the machine. Um, I did not see that IP address before until I you know did this over here. So let's we'll go ahead and uh, pretend like we don't have a uh, another box there. We're gonna do the OWASP top ten today though. Uh, at least a couple of it, okay? So introduction, this is the OWASP top 10 introduction. We have injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure, um, XML entity, external entity, all right, uh, broken access control, security misconfiguration, cross-site scripting, insecurity serialization, components with known vulnerabilities, and insufficient logging and monitoring. So hopefully we can go through a bunch of these and we'll get a bunch of them finished off here. This is a free room. All right, just so everyone knows. So the first one we got here is injection. Okay, so injection are flaws, blah, blah, blah. Read this whole thing, and you can click on question done, right? But this just tells you about injection. So each one kind of tells you about what the next one is for. All right, and injection is going to be, you know, we got SQL injection and command injection. So the first thing we're going to look at is operating system command injection. Good morning, Stig. So we're going to take a look at this, okay? And command injection occurs on the server side, okay? Command injection practical. So let's go ahead and start that machine up, and we'll do the command injection practical on this guy. Um, but command injection occurs when a server-side code like PHP in a web application makes a system call on the hosting machine. All right, so it actually talks back to that hosting machine, and then from there, oh, I don't even have my camera. There we go. And then from there, it uh, it it'll come back and give you information, such as a who am I. All right, reading files or also creating maybe even a reverse shell or telling it to listen for a shell, you know, something like that. Um, so one thing is if you don't know the difference between a bind, I've said this before also, if you don't know the difference between a bind and a reverse uh, TCP connection, that is something you definitely want to look up. Bind, uh, well, we'll start with reverse TCP is going to call back to you. So it's going to start from the victim machine coming back to you. Bind is going to wait for you to connect to it. Um, so reverse shells are a lot better for bypassing things like, uh, what is it, uh, firewalls and things like that because it is coming from a machine that is trusted. So we just got this IP address up here, so we'll go ahead and grab this. The first thing we're going to do, like it says, OS command injection. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can ping that. We cannot yet. That's okay. So we're just going to wait till we're able to ping that. And I'm also going to start a little... CD into desktop try hack me. Um, this one is OWASP. So we'll make a directory for OWASP top 10. CD in there. And let me go ahead and also get a cherry tree document going for you guys. Uh, file new instance. And we'll do OWASP top 10. Make this its own document here. All right, and the very first thing was OS command injection, right? All right, cool. So we'll go ahead and try to uh, ping that guy again. Whoops. Still nothing. That's kind of weird. Let's try to go to the website then. See if we can do that. Okay, still nothing there too. So maybe I have to use the other machine. So let's show that split view again. Let's see if I have to use that. Because I can ping... Well, that's my own tunnel. That's probably like right there. But enter. Let's see if I uh, have to use this guy. So let's go to terminal. Let's try to ping up from over here. 10, 10, 111, And we can ping him from over here. All right. Let's see if I can ping him back from over here again. Okay. We're pinging him from over here. So we'll go ahead and pretend like this didn't exist again. And we'll go back to our shell over here. So let's go ahead and look at that, that page like right there. And we'll see... Um, See what we're looking at. We'll also throw an MF scan at it. 
and it's Hebrews 5, Hebrews 5, port 22 and port 80, and it says directory search. So can we just do like an LS? We'll submit that. User LS was not found on the system, LS back LA. We do something like that. We do have username equals up here, so we might be able to do something like local file inclusion. That's the password. Could we do something like this? All right, so right now, we're just kind of stuck with, okay, what, what can we do with this information, right? It does say username, though. So I'm wondering if we have some type of username. Um, maybe we should actually read what we're supposed to do over here. But I'm wondering also, do we have some type of username or something like that that we have to log in with at first? Um, or maybe even just look up, do a directory buster on this guy and act like, you know, this is an actual box. In there. So let's do a Python 3, boom, and we'll go ahead and look at that, like right there. And then we're also going to go ahead and read what this guy actually wants us to do over here. So, command injection, okay, you can use these reverse shells. Once he attacks a foothold, okay, yep. Let's just explain about command injection. What is command injection? Okay, we try commands like who am I, ID, blah, 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 Windows, okay. So maybe we just need to do like a quick, you know, who am I. Maybe I'm going too much with that. Nope, user who am I was not found on the target system. All right, so we're not getting too far with this. Um, Wasted to detect active command injection. Just making sure that there's no actual user that we have to actually look at first. Let's consider a scenario, Evil Core. Let's start our development. So let's go ahead and look at the PHP script for this guy, see if it's pointing anywhere else. And, uh, or excuse me, not the PHP script, HTML script here, see if it's pointing anywhere else. So input text username, username, form control, ID username, placeholder, search user, required, submit, primary W100. <clears throat> so right now it's trying to find where to actually alert danger, danger. So method is a get, okay. Form action, if we put in nothing. What if we just put in nothing? Submit. Okay. Okay, so success user ID was found on system. User ID was found. Huh. Okay, that's weird. So it says success user ID was found on system. So now I'm wondering, okay, what do we have to put in? to get that guy to actually do something else, you know what I'm saying? Um, hmm. CSS, I wonder if we can go ahead and use his app and see if he finds anything. I'm not seeing anywhere else that's going, like right here, we might be able to, I mean, up 12 bit and see what's going on with that. Oops. Might be able to use F12 and see what's going on with that, like right there. There's our CSS, robots.txt, JS, JavaScript. Okay, cool, get username. We're not really logging in this guy now, are we? Um, let's go ahead and intercept it and see what's happening with that. Or maybe even just right click, inspect element, let's try that first. Type submit. Okay. JavaScript, bootstrap. And then we'll head back over to here. Use PHP code example. Ways to detect it. Let's complete the questions. Navigate to evilshell.php. We have to actually go somewhere. Okay. So we're going to go to evilshell.php. So let's go ahead and try that. Slash evilshell.php. Okay. Now we have evil shell. So now let's try ID. We'll enter, and there you go. That's a uh, operate, you know, uh, OS code injection, like right there. So the first thing we did was we went to this website right here. Um, then from here we did a ID. I'm just gonna put in ID just so we can see that. Yeah, we did that, and we got this back. So that is OS code injection. Okay. Uh, from here we should just be able to change the string out here, like who am I? Yes, we can. Cool. Boom. That's for a who am I. All right. So there we go. Okay. So we're starting to get information from this guy, right? Uh, let's see what information he actually wants to get. What is a strange text file in the root directory? 
I don't know yet. But let's go ahead and do an LS Tech LA. Or maybe just an LS, you know, LS Tech LA. Can we try that? We can. Uh, let's make it a little bit easier to read. Dr. Pepper.text is kind of weird. So we'll say Dr. Pepper.text. We want to throw that in there. How many non-root, non-service, non-Damian users are there? Okay, so number of users. We could probably look at like a, uh, oh, there's a DOM-based cross-site scripting and reflect they think in here too. So we can try that too. And remote OS command injections. We definitely found that also. Um, so we can try those too if we want to. But um, let's go ahead and look at that. See, let's do like um, slash Etsy password. Should be able to give us the information right. Ooh, that didn't show us anything. What about a cat slash Etsy password? Can we do that? Yes, we can. Make it easier to read. Um, non root, non Damien, I don't know. Pollinate, I think. Maybe pollinate and landscape. Maybe two. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with two for like right now. I don't know. Oh, uh, we're just going to go ahead and say two. I guess I could always go to the directory, huh? Or like home directory or something like that, right? That's incorrect. Okay, that's good. What user is this app running as? Um, I think that's going to be a Docker one, like right there, I think. Because I thought I saw something about Docker in there already. Uh, but we can see. Um, what sort of password running as? Hmm. Okay, how many non root, non service, non naming users are there? We did an Etsy password, right? We got this right there. So, message bus, is that? Yeah, we do have an Alex, we have a Docker in there, okay. Pollinate, landscape, message bus, APT non existent. So we, could always, we could always try to go to home, maybe, and be able to see what that is. See if there's anyone uh, like, uh, or LS Tech Home or something like that. We got here. Nobody. Cool. Okay. So that's going to take me a minute to figure out that one, like right there. Um, let's see what else we're supposed to figure out also at the same time here. We got what user is the app running as? What user is the app running as? Like, who am I? Is that what you mean? Like, www data? Try that, like right there. See if that's what it's questioning us for. What is the user shell set as? So that's gonna be a PWD. Like we're already like right now a bar WW HTML, which makes sense because we are running as that. What is the version of Ubuntu? Okay, maybe it's gotta get rid of that one. What is the user shell set as? Var. Oh, that's longer, actually. Um, I have no idea now. What is the user shell set as? Um, I feel like that would have been correct. www.html, right? Slash bar, slash something, slash something even longer. Okay, so we'll have to see that. Uh, what is the version of Ubuntu? Can we do just like a uname tag A in this guy? Can we do that in this? Might have to actually do like a links injection, boom, boom, bunch of SMP. Uh, might have to do something. What is it? It's um, LSB, I think it is. LSB release tag D. LSB release tag D, I think it is. Submit that. There we go. So that's the version of it. Um, yep. I don't know if we need that LTS. Okay. Print out the message of the day. That's in some weird location. I'm going to have to actually look that one up, like right here. Uh, what we can do for that is just go ahead and do a, uh, we'll clear that out. Then we'll do a locate MOTD, message of the day. And we'll see, um, let's see here. It's going to be over here somewhere. It's going to be like Etsy update. Or something like that. It might just be that one like right there. We'll try that first and we'll see if it'll print out the message of the day. No, nope, that's not it. Um, slash Etsy, MOTD. 
Okay, that didn't work either. That's the update. Yeah, let me try to get this a little bit bigger for you guys. There you go. So that's the update. That didn't give me anything either. Okay, um, I gotta try to figure out how to print out the message of the day on this guy. I thought it was that's the update MOTD. Um, let's see up. Let's see update. Is it update like that? Update tag MOTD somewhere like that. Okay, we got something there. A little bit better. Uh, we have header help test. Help text, blah, 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 updates, release, unattended. I'll try to do the message of the day news. How do I actually redo the message of the day? Just, just header, zero, zero header? I'll just be zero, zero header. We'll try that. Then we'll go back to this guy and put in that whole thing again. Um, it was all the way through there. Tack zero, zero header. Like that, I think it would be. Is that what I just saw? So zero, zero header like that. Or is it going to be a slash? It might be a slash, since that's probably a file there, huh? So we'll do a slash, zero, zero header. And there we go. We got the message today. All right, cool. Um, am I supposed to have, like, a code in here or anything like that that I grabbed from here? Probably about what favorite badger is showing. It's probably going to be Dr. Pepper. That's what I'm going to go with. Yep, it's Dr. Pepper. What is the user shell set as? That's something that kind of confuses me right now. Like, I did a PWD. Um, I don't really understand what's asking me. I think right there. Um, what is the user shell set as? That's what... Hmm. And how many non-root are there? Now, those are the two that I'm stuck on like, right now. I got an Etsy password. Let's see here. Um, let's go back to an Etsy password. We got for this guy. So we'll cat Etsy password. We'll put him back like this. One. There's only one. Syslog? Doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, we'll try that. I mean, we can always try. Yeah, okay. That didn't work out at all. Um... Because we already went to see who has a home directory and everything like that. I might just start. One, two, three, four, five. Because <laughs> Control F. We type in home. That would show us who has a home directory. Nobody seems like they have a home directory except for one person. This is really weird, this one. Um, I don't know if man is one. I have no idea. But really it should be anyone with a home directory. There's only one person this whole thing. This one's kind of just like a guessing game of like, I guess if you knew all of these, what every single one was, then you'd be like, oh, it's this many. But we're just gonna, I'm just going to start guessing at this one. So we'll say three. Nope. Four. Five. How many non-root, non-service, non-daming users are there? This is one way to do it. I went through every single number now. There is literally no more numbers I could possibly do. <laughs> Alright, well, no idea because you only need one number there. And, uh, yeah, zero? Is it zero? It's probably zero. That's why I can't find any. Okay. What is the user shell set as? Um, let's see here. What is the user shell set as? That one kind of, I'm still wondering like what they want me to do with that one. Because uh, we did that PWD. I don't really understand what's asking me like right there. Um, what is the user shell set as? 
Let's see here. We could try a couple more commands I know. Why is this thing... There we go. Why, is, why does it keep doing it like that? Oh, it's because I scrolled it. I don't know. It's going out there. GE tent, I think. Isn't that a command? Tac tac help and then tac tac usage. GE tent and then I believe we have to go to some type of file. GE tent for password. WG. Alright, cool. Let's see what this does. Same same thing as the password. Thought that was gonna give me something a little bit different, so I could see like you know like who is. So the question was, what is the question? The question was, um, what is the user shell set as? Well, I don't know what the fuck. There's zero users on here. How many non root non damien users are there? Zero. So who's the user? WW data is the user. So we control you this guy and we look for WW data and his is var or it's probably this user has been no login probably this guy right here that's probably what it's what it's set as like right there so we'll go ahead and grab that and we'll throw it into our OWASP top 10 here I don't know why my thing's doing that but that's okay so there we go all right that's super weird I never I've never had that I, I kind of want to stop doing it like don't do that anymore there we go. Okay, cool. Restore down. Didn't know you could actually do that. What is that? Restore up or something? It's crazy. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and get, hop on to broken authentication now. So now we're in broken, broken authentication. All right. This is brute force attacks. Okay. Uh, password spraying, things like that. Broken authentication, practical. All right. Well, we did get that one, guys. Let's go back. Let's have some fun, like real quick, because we can do command injection on this guy, right? So let's do a reverse shell and see if we get one. So let's go ahead and do an NC tag LVMP4444. We will stop that up there. And let's go ahead and do a, um, yeah, let's try to do a reverse shell. We know it's running a Docker. We might be able to do something with the Docker and get root. Um, so let's do that. Let's, um, okay, let's cat scripts. Um, let's try my NC reverse shell of text. And then obviously that's going to be different, like right there. Um, I could just wait for him. We could try that. We could try to connect to him. Um, but let's see if I can try to connect back to us. Let's see if we can do that first. So we'll do an IF config. And we'll go ahead and change my password here. 10.9.8.166.4444. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. And let's see if it calls back to us or if we do have to do that NC tacky. Submit that. And we do. We get a reverse shell. Cool. the in the home so cool so we got a reverse shell down there there we go there's one thing that we can do that's exciting stuff like right there uh, pretty awesome so you know that was that was super easy uh, to get that reverse shell and cool so now let's go ahead and keep working here uh, let's go to the next guy we had like I said broken out education <clears throat> we'll do the practical on here so for this example, we're looking at a logic flaw. So now we're going to connect to 8888. I do like how it's all the same IP address, you know, all the same person and everything. We're just connecting different areas of it. That's pretty cool, I think. Maybe not. <laughs> do I have to actually start the machine for that to actually happen? Or do I have to actually, like, tell this guy that I'm going on the next part? Yes, I do. Okay. Oh, as a free user, you can only have so many instances running at a time. Probably because that one still started. Is that saying I can only do so many? What did that say? You can only play two, two machines at a time. Yeah. I didn't think I had another one deployed because that one stopped, like right there. Broken off education, that one's done. So what else do I have deployed here? That's kind of weird. Or if I need to terminate this whole thing, I'll put it back up again. I have nothing else on. Like right now. That one's not on as far as I can tell. And 
This one's not on as far as I can tell. Maybe I just need to terminate the whole thing and just restart it. We'll try that. We'll try to terminate and then we'll just do it over again. So let's go ahead and start this machine up. There we go. Maybe we just need to do that every single time. We just got to terminate it. Hop right back into it. But we know we are going to 8888. All right. So let's go ahead and make a, for broken authentication, we're going to make a, a little thing in here for this guy. My top 10 stuff over here. Oh, I forgot to do cross-site scripting and everything. See if it was, if we were able to do it. What did that actually find? Let's see. Down base, so use JavaScript on quick alert, blah, blah, blah. SVG on load. Where'd you actually find it at? 1091. It probably did work. Oh, see, that's down base, then reflected. So uh, with the username, did he get something back? That one most likely worked also. Error, user, blank script alert was not found. I was saying it wasn't found, so I don't know. Remote OS command injection, so it did find that also. So that's actually found a lot. A lot more than what you found during my test. <laughs> then do everything manually. All right. So this guy's all start up and everything. Let's go ahead and grab him. 8888. Hopefully he starts up uh, pretty quickly. Let's find out. Go ahead and try to ping him. Yeah, he started up cool. And hope we get to 888 and we can do some broken authentication. Learn about attacking authentication is rule focus on teaching on basics of attacking and authenticating the system. Okay. So I wonder if we need to register. Register a username. Overgrown. Carrot one. Email test at test.com. Password one two three four five. Register. Don't save. Learn about attack authentication, okay. Username overgrown carrot one. One, two, three, four, five. Don't save. You need to log in with a specific account to be able to find the flag. Okay. Like admin. Admin admin. There, invalid username and password. Okay. So now we need to try to start to figure out who do we need to log in as um, and everything else. So try to register. Try to register a user named Darren. You will see that the user already exists. We try to register a user Darren. You'll see that you are now logged. You will see that you are now logged in, and we'll be able to see the content present only in Darren's account, which in our case is the flag that you will need to retrieve. But then we need to move on to Arthur's account, who I feel like we're not just going to be able to move on to. So let's go ahead and go back to register. The username was Darren, right? So we'll just uh, test at test.com. And one two three four five as a password. Username Darren. Error: This user is already registered. Logged in as Overgrown Carrot. All right. Let's go back to authentication. So I'm logged in as him. Is there anything special in here that I got to look at? This will focus on teaching the basics. See if there's anything up here like, you know, so reference slash authentication. Okay. Nope. Uh, let's go ahead and log out from Darren. And we'll just try to log in like that. Error invalid username or password. So that's good. That gives invalid username or password. Because if it gives us both of that, invalid username or password, then we don't know which one is which, which is always a good thing uh, whenever it does something like that. So, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Register. Space Darren. Test at test dot com. And one, two, three, four, five. Can we do that? Don't save. Space Darren. Now that username doesn't exist, one, two, three, four, five, don't save. Yep, and now we are logged in as Darren. There we go. So put in a space. I was like, hmm, there should be a way to be able to do this. And we do get that. So now we have to figure out Arthur's. We probably do a space Arthur and just the exact thing. And that is broken authentication. Um, what I was hoping for is that maybe down here, you know what, maybe I wonder if in F12 we can actually do it. Um, but what I was hoping for is that maybe we could like change usernames or maybe a username ID or something like that. But maybe we can still. 
I wonder if there's some type of uh, ID or something like that that we could change. Uh, let's go ahead and fire a burp suite and find out if there's anything like that that we could change, which will then allow us to become, you know, a different user or whatever. Because that would be pretty sweet also, I feel like. So let's go ahead and uh, fire a burp suite. And we'll see, we'll log in again and see if like, an ID comes through. And then we'll try like ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. So if not, we're just going to do the same exact thing we just did there a minute ago, which is fine. We're just going to do that with Arthur, that's all. So we'll go back to proxy, uh, we'll backspace, log out. There's my cookie session. Forward that off, forward, 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 don't care. Okay, and let's go ahead and try to log back as Darren. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we intercept that request. We have a space Darren, right? And I did not put any of this in there, so let me go ahead and print screen this. We'll actually session, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we didn't get any type of ID or anything like that, so we can actually just go ahead and um, log out. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, take a print screen from here for it. Um, register, right? And what we registered was space there in one two three four or test test dot com one two three four five. And then I believe we're going to do things I think for Arthur. So let's go into a space Arthur. Make sure I spell right. A R T H U R. A R T H U R. Test test dot com. Password one two three four five. And this time I can actually get this egg right here. Boom. We'll forward that off. Hopefully I'm right with the Arthur thing. It already said the same thing with Arthur. And we can forward that guy off. Alright. Space A-R-T-H-U-R. One, two, three, four, five. Go to login. Don't save. Whatever. And now I can take a print screen of that. Because now I have that plus sign there. Which actually shows me, hey... That's all good. And we'll go ahead and we'll forward that off. And we should get the, another, another flag. Should, I believe. We got a session token and we do. We get a flag. All right, cool. So that's some broken authentication like right there. Let's hope it was a little bit different, but that's a pretty easy form of it right there. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw that into our try hack me over here. What we have next, sensitive data exposure. Now try try to do the same trick. See if you can log R30 up to that. Cool. So we're done with that one. So we go ahead and terminate this machine. Okay. And we'll do sensitive data exposure. And we'll start that machine now. So sensitive data exposure, supporting material one. Um, showing us to access if we use SQL uh, Lite 3, using SQL Lite, getting to a database, select star from customers. Yep. So it looks like we're getting into a database, pulling that information down. I wonder if we actually be using SQL map or not. Um, and then we're going to crack those hashes. I'm going to use John. I'm going to try to use John the Ripper with cracking the hashes. Uh, it does say to use free password hash cracker. Um, if you are doing um, like your CCPT, your web application penetration test, your EJPT, all those, um, Rocky.txt can be used for all those, just so you know. Uh, if it's not found in Rocky.txt, it's most likely not supposed to be found. Uh, just so you guys know, you don't have to go to some crazy places to find anything. You will find everything in rocku.txt. So there's your information for that for today. So we'll go ahead and get this guy up and running. And we'll see about the sensitive data exposure. And see if we can uh, do anything with this. So let's see if we can ping him first. All right, cool. We can. Let's go ahead and do an map on him. Because this one's actually like a sensitive data exposure thing. So... We're going to need a little bit more information, I feel like, on this guy. We have port 80 up and running. We do know that. All right, cool. Probably have like a 3306 or some of that up and running, I would think. But let's go ahead and test that out. 
And let's also do a, since it is sensitive data exposure, we'll do a Python 3, first search.py for a comma.txt as our file. <clears throat> there we go. And we'll try to run that guy right there. Uh, we do have welcome to sense and sensitivity. Wow. Out in New Zealand, huh? Okay. We do have a login over here. I wonder if we can do like an admin admin as login. Okay, we don't get any credentials. We do have login response equals failure. Or if we response to accept or success. That is a thing, just so you guys know. That is like a legit thing to try. Um, that's not just something like, you know, I just made that up just now. Admin, admin, don't save. Okay. Let's go ahead and log in. Response equals success. We'll send it to repeater. Repeater, what do we got for us? Arrow forward, boom, boom. Okay. Nothing yet. Forward. All right, let's try that. Right click. We'll send this to repeater. Repeater, you got anything for us? Send. Okay, nothing. Just a 302. Probably saying that, hey, you're an idiot. Let's go ahead and right click. Send a repeater. But this time we'll say um, success. Oh, we got 301 that time. Um, that's not working for us. Well, we, I mean, it was something. It was, it was, it was a good try. You know? It was, a, it was a good try. Can't say it wasn't. Uh, let's see. We got must remember to do something better with the database and store it in slash assets. Okay. So that's good. So we do have something in slash assets. Uh, TFP response message. Login bit. API login. Four method of action post API login. We have username, password. Value is login like right there. And then it says to not store it in slash assets. So what I'm wondering now is can we actually go to slash assets up here. So can we go like slash assets? We can. Okay, cool. So we got our slash assets. So kind of like a little file inclusion kind of thing there. Uh, we have our web app add database like right here. Let's go ahead and download this. And we'll save that. I'll save that file. We'll download that. Um, and we do have our slash assets like right there too. So if you didn't find it there, we did find it down here. Uh, let's go ahead and stop that. And we'll do a move from our downloads. And what the hell was that even called? That was called web app. Web app DB to right here. And we'll do our SQL right three right web app right DB. Okay, so then we have that. So we can show databases. I think we can do this with this. Um, select star from users. Show tables. Can I drive through some of that? Huh. How do I show stuff in here? I don't know how to show stuff. But I did do a select star from users, and that seemed to work pretty well. But I don't know how to show stuff in that database. Now I think about it. Um, like dot databases? Okay, cool. So dot databases, it looks like. Dot tables. Sessions and users. Dot Select star from sessions. Select star from users. Okay, so there we go. So we got this hash, and we got this over here. I'm not really too familiar with SQL. I, I wonder if this is like cookies over here, because, and then these ones over here are something different. Um, I don't really, I'm not really familiar with it, but I believe like, I feel like we got to take the one on the right side. I feel like we have to grab those guys over there. So let's go ahead and we'll scroll this into, just because, yeah, we'll try that. So let's go ahead and we'll take these and we'll throw them into a file. Let's do a sublime so then we can delete these guys over here. Actually, we can just do a nano. We'll just nano it. Um, nano SQL.txt. We'll go say admin. And his is this. Bob. And his is this. And Alice. <clears throat> and hers is this. Alright, cool. John. 
pet tech word list, rocky.txt, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then we'll do our sql.txt. Hopefully, he finds something in here. If not, that is okay. He can't even figure out what type of thing it even is. That's right. Also, we could probably use something like, I don't know, uh, crackstation.net or something like that. I think it's just a raw MD5, though. But we could probably use crackstation.net or something like that. I think it's going to be raw MD5. I think it's like that. Tag tag format is that. So we probably do a tag tag format equals raw MD5. There we go. So we got admin query. So we do have it. So that is raw MD5. We did get a login. So let's go ahead and pop back over to here. I think my son is acting like an idiot. I think he just started yelling. And yep, we get a flag. And that's going to be about it for me tonight because my son is going crazy, I think. Like right now. So, I think I'll actually grab all this stuff first. Yeah, I think my son just went, uh, went insane to start playing with his toys and everything. So, that's going to be about it for me tonight. He's supposed to be in bed. So, you guys have a good one. We stopped on task four. So, I hope everyone has a good one. I right, get my son back in bed.